Hey guys and girls, it's Nathan here from the Reinvested Headquarters today. I uh, want to talk a little bit about how to retire in the GFD, Global Financial Depression Slash Scamdemic, Part 3. Uh, 2020 property portfolio. Can you still build a property portfolio to get you to retirement over the course of 2020? Yes. Um, this year so far, we've had over a dozen people that have entered into double digit property portfolios. Woohoo! The home of building property portfolios. Uh, going back 11 years ago when I first started this business, there was no such thing as people out there in the media, uh, you know, talking about it. They were talking about like negative gearing and all that sort of stuff. Um, sort of the thing that I'm most proud about over the last decade is being able to lead that sort of uh, property portfolio uh, strategy for uh, investors throughout Australia. So can you still do it in 2020 starting from scratch? If so, what would you need? So let's look at some of, uh, just some random numbers. We're gonna put them on this side of the board. Uh, the cheapest deal so far in 2020 would be uh, 15k. That was for a little unit. Uh, the most expensive is 3.1 mil. Uh, if we look at capital cities, uh, on average, uh, the purchase prices would be between 120k for a property. Uh, to about 330k for a property. With an average price around the 200 grand mark. Um, looking at, actually no, I'm gonna write this from this perspective, let's say average one at 200k, and say entry price of 100k, what sort of deposit do you need to get started in the property? So. Assuming a 20% deposit, I don't like working with anything less than that, um, just from a, a risk perspective and whatnot, um, say 20% deposit plus 5% for closing costs, that would mean that you would need 25K. Um, on this one here, you would need 50K. I'm picking up in Brisbane for 130, 140 grand. You, know, you can pick up properties in capital cities for very cheap. Let's say the average of 50K, 25K, say 40, 50K that you'd need. So if you wanted to build a property portfolio in 2020, uh, you would need about 30 to 50K savings or equity. This could come from uh, your principal place of residence. This could come from uh, savings, from hard work, whatnot. So if you could save up thirty dollars to $50,000, you could get yourself into a property in uh, 2020. So how would it work? Let's assume you buy a property for, I'm gonna use the number here, of $150,000. Right? $150,000, and this will hopefully tie the last two videos that we've seen. So if you haven't seen part one or part two, important to watch them as well before you, you know, or if you're just watching this one for the first time, go and check back on those ones. So let's assume that you put down a $150,000 property. You would put down a $30,000 deposit, uh, meaning that you would need a loan of $120,000, right? So $30,000 uh, deposit, and then say a 5% closing cost, which would be stamp duty, legal fees and whatnot, would be about 7,500, meaning that you need 37,500 to pull off this deal. You would end up with a uh, loan at $120,000 at a 20% deposit and an 80% loan. Um, at a, say, a 4% interest rate, uh, that would be four four thousand eight hundred per annum. Calculate me to make sure that I'm correct. 4,800 per annum on that. So um, if you were to purchase this property using $30,000 saving, $7,500 for closing costs, a total, grand total of $37,500 required for this deal, $120,000 loan, 4% interest on $120,000 uh, is $4,800. Um, if you were to rent this property out for, say, $250 per week, that would mean that you would be at $13,000 per annum in... Um, in cash flow. Meaning that if you were to have 4,800 in interest, would equal to uh, 8,200 left over. 8,200, council, water, strata, 
in, real estate agent fees, insurance, could leave you with whatever left over. But just assuming that's a neutral cash flow property, um, that would be a fantastic uh, sort of position. So if you can pick up a property in the capital city for 150 grand, 30 grand deposit, 37,000 total required, 120,000 loan, um, 4% interest on 120,000 is 4,800 per annum. 250 a week rent on that 150 grand purchase would be 13,000 per annum. Uh, 4,800 out of $13,000 per year, 8,200. Just want to double, triple check that, yep. Um, meaning that you would have a neutral to positive cash flow property. If the interest rate was to go down from 4% to, um, to 3%, for example, um, and you'd be able to get a better deal, well then that would be an extra $1,200 per annum. So if we start looking at what I was talking about in the previous videos, how can you retire in the GFD slash scandemic? You can still do it by buying the right properties and building that portfolio out. So how I could see that working, I'm just gonna rub this all off. How could you retire? Remembering that we can buy properties still in the current market that are very cheap. Um, why is this an opportunity? I've talked about it, about me smiling from ear to ear with excitement by this point in time, because we're gonna start seeing stimulus packages come in. We're starting to see interest rates fall. We're starting to see liquidity flow into the markets and that's ultimately gonna go find a home. And property prices is something they need to keep inflating uh, in order for the Ponzi scheme of the currency to survive, um, whether it be that you wanna use equity in your home to buy a new car, an extension, a holiday, whatever. People are doing that shit. I do not ever recommend that. I'm a big fan of you know having debt and then paying it down, but you know they need to keep this game alive. So, um, looking at a property portfolio, let's assume if you wanted to, uh, if someone wanted to earn uh, an income of um, say uh, eighty thousand dollars per annum, and these are just numbers, right? And I just want to once again reiterate, none of this is financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. Um, always seek. Uh, you know, financial advice, better than that. I don't really like financial advisors. You should be your own financial advisor. But obviously all this stuff that I'm talking about is how uh, I was able to retire in the GFC, um, the global financial crisis back in 2008, 2009. So um, I used to think to myself, you know, I wanted to build an income. My income goal was very simple and very modest at 50,000. I'm gonna use 50,000 actually, we we'll use 50,000 because this was exactly how I saw myself retiring from the workforce uh, in 2010, was um, like before 2010. So I wanted to have 10 properties that bought me in $100 per week cash flow positive, and that equals $1,000 per week cash flow, or 52,000 per annum. At the time of me building my property portfolio, I thought, how the fuck could this be possible? Um, I never saw any mentors, never had any guidance. There was no such thing as internet, YouTube. Well, there was internet around the start of 95. Who am I kidding? But um, there was no you know, realestate.com, there was no YouTube, no Facebook, no discussions, no forums, um, no resource to be able to get access to, no Google Maps. Uh, it was very, very different to what the perspective is now. But um, that was my goal. And I thought if I bought, 10 properties at 200K. If the 10 properties times 10 equals two mil. Actually, no, I'm gonna put the numbers so you can visualize what $2 million looks like. $2 million, if I could get those 10, those 10 properties and they go from 200 to 400K, and everyone told me I was a dickhead at the time, it's never gonna happen, you're on off your head, whatever. I've heard that I'm off my head for my whole life, maybe I am, but um, it's working for me. So 400 grand, if that property turns from 200 grand to 400 grand, that means that you turn two mil into four mil. I thought to myself, with that position, I could sell off uh, five properties, which would mean $2 million. meaning that I could pay out all my debt, meaning that I could have five properties, um, five properties unencumbered, 
um, that would be returning me 300 bucks per week. Uh, five properties times 300 bucks a week, so it's 15,600 per annum times it by five equals 78,000 big ones per annum. I got to that point where I built it and I was like, hang on a second, I don't want to sell off any properties. This thing's working great, right? Like if I had a very good girlfriend and I wanted to go to the pub, I wouldn't just go until my girlfriend go away. I'd get my girlfriend to drive me to the pub, right? That's not being sexist, but it's just, you know, <laughs> hypothetical, right? Um, why would you get rid of something that's working well, right? If you're in a good relationship, why would you throw it away um, when you could, you know, work upon that? So if you've got a good relationship with your properties, why do you want to just break up with them, uh, send them off to, you know, somewhere else? Um, and someone else is going to take advantage of the opportunity there. Um, when you know you can keep them in your position, so that's where I thought to myself, how could I get these properties to generate more cash flow? And it wasn't until um, about two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine, where all of my uh, colleagues and whatnot were scared about their jobs. It was a very similar time to where we're at at the moment in the GFC, uh, where in the GFD. Um, and I thought to myself, if that property is renting for um, three hundred bucks per week. For example, and it's at a 6% interest rate, when the interest rate went down, let's say each 1% that it came down by, 1% of two mil was $20,000 per year. So what I realized at a very young age, whether it be, you know, if I'm just a simple guy from Western Sydney, right, like a lot of people like to say, reality it is, is that I found that a, a strategy that worked for me and all I did along the time was to buy myself options. People might sit here and say, you know, it's impossible to build a property portfolio in 2020 or whatnot. Um, here at Be Invested, we've got you know, thousands of people that are doing it. Uh, very humbled to be a part of people's positions and being able to help them you know, create financial independence uh, for themselves. But as I said, this year was my original goal, 10 properties, 100 bucks a week, positive cash flow, 1,000 bucks a week, 52 grand per annum. That's what I was able to do, uh, my portfolio was at um, about, I think it was about 17 to 18 properties. At the time when I quit my job, uh, I had 25 properties by the age of 25. And here I am at 35 with uh, over 200. So obviously, um, strength comes in numbers. The more properties I've got, the more successful I've been. Uh, there has been you know, years of heartache and, and pain and you know, the hustle just trying to build that property portfolio out. But if someone was to want to start in uh, in 2020 to build a property portfolio, how would you save up to buy, um, you know, 10 properties at uh, 200 grand a piece? That means that you would need about $50,000 per acquisition. And this takes me on as to why I like buying properties that are below market value with a strong upside for capital growth and whatnot. So if you need $50,000 per year, if you can save that, the quick you can save, say 30 to 50, whether we're looking at a 200 grand, 150 or, or whatnot, um, the, the more money you can save, the quicker you can get your next deposit. So if you can save 30 to 50,000 per annum, that means that you can buy one property one times property per annum. So if one was to save $50,000, uh, purchase a property for 200 grand, that would mean on year five, would be five properties on year five. Now, if you were to be able to save, um, I was working two full-time jobs at the time, um, if I could save um, a deposit of uh, $50,000 and buy a property, if I could pull equity from a previous property. So if I'm picking up a property that's worth 250K and you're buying it cheap and you pick it up for 200K, that means that one, for my example, obviously, because I'm not giving financial advice here, guys, um, the, um, if I was to buy a property for 200 grand that's worth 250, I would put down a 40, K deposit plus 10K closing cost, meaning 50K into the deal. 
But most importantly, with that 200 grand purchase, I would have a loan at 160K. Now, what I realized at a very early on point, I tried to pay off that 200 grand and get that loan down from 160 to 150 to 140 to 130. And I'm like, I'm gonna be working for the next 20 years to pay off this property, which I wanna have more properties. This is pointless. So that's why I kept saying the positives. But if I was to revalue the property at 250K by buying below market value, that 250K at 80% lend was $200,000. So if I've got a $200,000 loan now, pay out the old one at 160 would mean that I've got 40K of my capital back. So if I put 50K into the deal, I got 40K back out of the deal, it means that I could use that to purchase another property. So every year I could buy one property using savings and buy one property by using equity from my existing property that I bought. That means on five years later, I would have 10 properties. So it's a very simple method. It's not something that's been you know, complicated. A lot of people say to me when I'm talking to them, oh, what about doing building, like building duplexes and building blocks of units and subdividing and options and wraps and all that sort of stuff. Very, very simple model, model for me. Uh, if we look at McDonald's, they have a cheeseburger with the same pickle on that they use on the Big Mac, the cheeseburger, the fucking McFill of the fish, whatever, um, chicken. Um, for me, having properties that I can buy, if a property is worth 250, I'm picking it up for 200, I put a 40 grand deposit in, 50K all up, means I've got a loan at 160 at purchase. I go back, refinance my property, get a loan at 200, minus 160 means I've got 40 grand equity out. I can use a 40 grand equity every year. So that property, I buy a property, I get the equity, I buy another property, get the equity. But at the same time, I was saving for another deposit. So I was able to buy two properties a year. Then I was able to buy three properties a year and build out that property portfolio. So going back to the first video on this exercise, um, for how to retire in a GFD slash scamdemic, can you build a property portfolio in 2020? Yes, you can buy properties that are in capital cities, 120, 140, 160, 200, up to 350,000. They're still out there. I'm talking about Sydney, Brisbane, anywhere that's a capital city, not in regional towns or, or places that no one's ever heard of. So um, yeah, here we are in 2020. Is it still possible? If you need help on that, need help on financing, need help on legal, need help on financial planning, I reach out to my team, obviously, I'm not a financial advisor to give you financial uh, literacy on this front. Um, however, um, you know these are some of the exercise, some of the examples of what I've done to build my property portfolio, and I've seen other people be able to do over the course of the last decade. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch up soon. If you need help, email my office admin at beinvested.com.au or call us on one three hundred three six seven nine two five. Bye for now.